So switching over to heat pump, um, what I would want to do before is get out of the discharge air economizer case because actually in our case, it'll be disabled. Um, in, the, in the live class, um, I found that when I left it in discharge air economizer, I usually use the heat pump to cool and then there'd be this delay because it was trying to use the uh, discharge air economizer to cool the space. But I think since we don't have a valid outside air reading, I think we're not going to, I think the economizer operation is disabled. So I want to change the personality to be um, heat pump with reversing valve to cooling to heating. So I can change that on the configure tab. So if I go to the configure tab, here's the description of the current personality. I can click and choose heat pump with reversing valve to cooling to heating. Click OK. Yes, I want to reset the device. I'll wait for the table to upload. And so for a heat pump, the timing settings for the compressor, whether it's for heating or cooling, are set on the cooling tab. The heating tab for heat pump cases only applies to that extra stage of auxiliary heat if you have one more stage of heating compared to cooling. And then also there's a description here. There's for heat pump personalities, that script running in the background now will show this setting that we call RV normal. And that can be unchecked in cooling or checked in heating. And the RV normal setting says when the reversing valve output is off, what, it, what do I get when the compressors run? And so RV normal cooling means turn on the reversing valve output when you need heat. RV normal heating means turn on the reversing valve output when you need cooling. And so let's see what we got here now. Uh, we are in the heating case because our temperature is lower than the heating set point. So the fact that economizer setting doesn't matter anyway. But I still do see the um, calculations in the cooling tab. And so what I'm seeing here, the difference with two compressors is the first stage we only it only cares about the first 50 percent so at a 10 percent heating calculation the compressor on time is it still 10 percent or did it change no not the 16 percent so once the heating or cooling requirement gets to 50 percent then stage one will be on indefinitely at the full 600 seconds you know what? This is acting as if it. Oh, that, that is right. That's right. So now the compressor is on. It's calculating to be on for 100, now 240 seconds. And stage two won't turn on until we get to at least 50% in terms of the calculation. And then it'll turn on um, as the, and for a longer period as the requirement goes from 50 towards 100%. So at 25% at calculation, the first compressor would be on for half of the base time, and the second compressor would never turn on. And then at in a 75% calculation, then stage one compressor would be on indefinitely, and the stage two compressor would be on for half of its base time. So we're actually at 25% here now. And so we can see that the first compressor does want to be on for half of the base time. And so we'll wait until the calculation goes up past 50, and then we'll see that compressor 2 um, will turn on for some fraction of the base time. So it is the same duty cycle time is shared by the compressors. The same minimum on and off times are shared by the two compressors. We always lead with one. There's no lead lag. And it's always split 50-50, so there's not really any awareness or feature to say that, you know, compressor one is larger or smaller compared to compressor two.
And so if I want to get this to ramp a little more quickly, I can raise my set points a little further. So on the configure tab, I'll change the heating set point to 77 and the cooling lock temp SP to 79. Because the nature of the PI calculation is the further away you get from set point, the faster it should ramp towards 100%. So let's see, we're at 34% heating requirement. Now we're at 46. So I checked the compressor operation on the cooling tab. So compressor number one is almost running for the entire duration. That being 600 seconds. Um, but I do need to get past 50% before I see the second stage one to run. So we'll get there probably at the next 30 second mark, at least in my controller. So at 57% now, I can see that compressor two wants to run for the first 84 seconds out of 600. Um, we're further along in the duty cycle than 84. So compressor two wouldn't actually run until the compressor duty cycle reset back at 600 seconds, which will be another few minutes from now. Um, notice there's also that interstage time in the bottom left. I don't think that normally is something that you need to change. The interstage time does happen to be the uh, kind of the delay period between stages turning on, but that sort of doesn't happen because the temperature kind of naturally rises. Um, if you weren't sure what the interstage time does, I mentioned that there's a glossary of terms that you can refer to. And so if you wanted to see that, I'll go to help, ASIC 1, 8100, and then the engineering guide is actually the, uh, the document that has the glossary of terms. So those ENG are for the 8100 controller. There's the glossary, the contents tab, introduction, parameters, and set point. And then if it's in alphabetical order, you find interstage time, delay between coming on a fan, compressors, or heating stages in seconds. And then there's the interstage timer that actually shows you that counting. That's actually what this one is here. Uh, so let's see, we still have a few more minutes before compressor two will start. Um, you can see that compressor one has calculated up to 600 seconds because we're past 50% in terms of the heating requirement. So compressor one just runs indefinitely once either of the cooling or heating requirements gets past 50%. So this is all the way up at 100 now. So they should both be calculating to run on full time. And they are. Let's see what other slides we have. I can show you in some other stuff and come back. So that just mentions that compressor one cares about the first 50%. Compressor two cares about, and this should actually say cooling and heating requirement because heat pump, the compressor runs for both cooling and heating. So compressor two cares about the second 50%. Okay, so that's saving and reloading. So let's just go back and take a look where we're at. We're still about three minutes away. Um, I'll show some of the other tabs. Um, notice here I haven't mentioned things that are basically identical from what we saw in the first session with the VAV controller. So if I go to other views, there is a state schedule, but it works just like in the VAV controller where I can disable the internal schedule. Um, I could set the on and off time for the for occupied, unoccupied NSB and 15 minute intervals, that's no different. Um, the light schedule is just like in the 6100 controller in that I need to assign an output and then I can set on and off times for the lighting function. Um, I could choose to follow, have the lights turn on when occupied. I can disable the internal schedule if I want. Um, in this case, we have this lights off delay 
And if lights off delay is zero, then in that blink feature that I talked about with the VAV controller, we don't actually blink the light. Well, we blink the light based on the delay setting. So if the delay is zero, we don't blink the light. We just turn off at the off time. If the off delay is non-zero, then we turn off at the off time and blink them and then count down for whatever that delay is in minutes. It doesn't have to be the fixed one minute that we saw in the 6100 controller. Love that. Still a couple minutes away. Um, let's see here. Wall sensor is the same. The settings are in a little different spot, but they're the same in terms of I can enable set point adjustment. I can enable the digital display with the WSO61. I can set the single set point so that the WSO61 um, changes uh, the heating, the cooling set point at the same time by adjusting the midpoint. With after hours enable, I can determine the after hours time allowed in minutes when they push the button, how many minutes of occupancy do they get. Yeah, so now we're just less than a minute away. So actually, I'm going to change my set points just so that it's not going to stay on indefinitely. So let's go to the configure tab. I'm going to lower the set point, the heating set point to 76. Cooling tab. So once this counts up to 600 and restart, so actually I can see compressor two is actually on because once it calculated to be on indefinitely, then it turned on. But now let's just calculate and show that it will turn off. So on the status tab, See where we're at here. Oh, here's another note. I think there's a an error. Let's see. Check. Um, other views buttons because the backnet tab disappeared. Backnet tab not shown. Let's see. I guess I need to lower my set point even further to get this to not be a hundred percent. So I'll lower it to say. 74, that's lower. So it should definitely start ramping down then. And then I just want to show you that the on times will calculate and adjust accordingly. And it did there. So now that the heating requirements at 96%, then on the cooling tab, I can see that compressor two only wants to run for 552 out of 600 seconds. Compressor one still wants to run indefinitely because it will as long as the requirement is above 50%. Um, some of the other similarities, let's see, there's alarm wall sensor we talked about, um, where that has, we enable the digital display in the single set point. If we want to shift the set point together after hours time allowed, they push the button. That can be as high as 255 minutes or four hours and 15 minutes. It can it can actually be as little as zero if that means it wouldn't do anything. Um, and then here's user adjust enable. Um, and then we adjust the set points since we have the digital wall sensor, but um, it's limited by the cooling temp upper and lower limit. Um, there's also this zone temp alarm range in both VAV controllers. And we're actually going to use those with the IntelliFront part of the program. And uh, call. James, I think I asked, but I don't remember the answer. Are you going to do the IntelliFront stuff next week, or do I need to ask Randy? I think I asked, but I don't remember what I heard. No, I don't believe so. We're not pushing IntelliFront. Um, okay. So I believe I'm just going to be doing the classes on today and gotcha. Wednesday. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Good to yep. know. Thank you. So in IntelliFront, we're actually going to look at the um, zone temp alarm. So it's, it's good to know what causes that alarm to turn on. And so this zone temp alarm range is in degrees. And so for this many degrees beyond set point, then the zone temp alarm flag turns on. So you can set that as little as one degree. And so now at one degree, I am not my temperature is not one degree lower than the heating set point. So it's not good. I'm not quite there to get a low temperature alarm. But if I set my 
heating set point to 76, then I would be more than a degree below set point. So let's go configure tab, heating off temp SP at 76. And let's see here on my wall sensor. This should go into low alarm. I think I'm, we might need to get to 100% requirement though, because I am more than one degree. Or is it because it rounded? Let's see, what if I go higher, go to 77? Okay, so it needs to be our, I think it's, when it was like, it needs to be more than a degree and a half, I think, to exceed the one degree. So that's why I have a low alarm here now. Once I, because um, now I'm, what, 2.2 degrees above or below set point. And so now I have a low alarm. And the same thing happens on the high side. If the temperature is above the cooling set point by more than the um, a zone temp alarm range, then you'll get a, a high temperature alarm. Um, there is auxiliary outputs. I didn't talk about them. Actually, auxiliary outputs I use more often in the VAV controller. Um, but there are auxiliary outputs. There's both auxiliary cooling and heating, which the controller can turn those on by itself with internal control. And then there's also auxiliary one and two, which allow either the front end or a supervisory controller to turn those on by communication. And so for the 8100, if I look in the glossary from the engineering guide for auxiliary, heating and cooling. Auxiliary cooling enable says if the cooling requirement is 100% and the zone temperature is greater, so you have this auxiliary cooling temperature offset and the auxiliary wait time. So if you're beyond the set point by the temperature for the time and you're at 100%, then you get the auxiliary feature to turn on. And then auxiliary heating just turns on when in the heating mode. And so that we use more in the VAV controller um, because the auxiliary heat um, sometimes is used for like, uh, if you have like baseboard heating as opposed to electric heat, then sometimes we just want to turn that on when in the heating mode. And so as soon as the temperature drops below the heating set point, we turn on the auxiliary heat. And then when the heating is um, temperature satisfied by one degree, then we turn off the auxiliary heat. Um, so that's one case there. You do need to set a auxiliary, if you're choosing any of the auxiliary functions, you do need to set an output mask. So here we give you the mask for uh, auxiliary one and two, and if you were to enable auxiliary heating or cooling, then you could set the mask because by default notice that the masks are all none. If you do change the mask, you should reset the controller. And then in the 6100, um, the masks will show you the full eight outputs because it's kind of a generic list we use for all ASIC ones. And then obviously for a 6100, you have to choose something between output one and five because that controller only has five digital outputs. Um, so that is the auxiliary functions. Let's see what else is here. Other views. Uh, the trending, I didn't talk about the trend setup in the 8100 because it's the same as in the 6100. Laid out a little differently, but set your table and entry. Um, set your, let's see, so by default, we're tracking zone temp and discharge temp. If you like those, you can just click the start trend button. And it kind of makes the screen disappear. I'm not quite sure why it does that. I'm going to try and find that out. Let's see. Trend tab, click start trend. Trend tab goes away. But if you go back to the trend tab with other views and trend, um, then it will have set the trend day of week and the hour so that we kind of know how to organize our timestamp. 
and then the interval can be as frequent as every 15 minutes. Uh, let's see, other views. There's some half degree settings in the ASIC ones. We don't usually use those. Uh, they're in the Fahrenheit cases, they're intended more for our Celsius customers because of one degree Celsius is almost two degrees Fahrenheit. And so uh, there's some times where they want to be able to set their set points in half degree increments. And I, I don't recommend it for Fahrenheit cases. Um, it's usually not needed. Um, occupancy sensor, not commonly used, but you can connect an occupancy sensor. I think our wiring diagram showed it on input eight. And the glossary may tell us as well. Occupancy sensor enabled, yeah. So occupants enables operation of an occupancy sensor on input eight. And so it, it can work with either closed contacts being occupied or closed contacts being unoccupied. That's what this occupancy sense closed means. If occupancy sense closes, yes, that means closed contacts means occupied. And so that's available in both ASIC ones. Um, there's some other alarm settings beyond the zone temperature. There's some um, compressor alarms that we can monitor um, an input to see if there's a compressor fault. Uh, if the discharge air temperature gets too high or low, we can get a discharge air alarm and optionally uh, disable the compressor if the discharge air temperature gets too high or too low. Um, and then we can have water loop uh, alarms as well. If the water loop temperature gets too high or too low for like a fan coil case or something, then you can also um, disable uh, compressors if the water loop temperature gets out of range. Um, we didn't talk about demand in the a in the 6100, but there's demand settings in both. And what the demand settings can do is if you're monitoring um, electrical usage, then as the electrical usage gets higher, you can start to spread your set points out if it starts to approach a limit that you don't want to exceed. So the first way we can start to use, ele use less electricity is by spreading the set point and so that's what this um, demand reset range has to do with so that's in degrees usually we um, have a, a demand level between zero and six so as the demand level goes from zero to six then we reset the temperatures um, up to six degrees so if we had like a 74 degree cooling set point and a 72 degree heating set point, if we went all the way up to level six, the cooling set point would reset from 74 to 80 degrees plus six degrees. The heating set point would reset down from 72 to 66 degrees at minus six degrees. And that would should tend to cause us to use less electricity. Um, we can also um, do some uh, rotating outages and so based on the group then um, this, is, this is more useful in the rooftop case compared to the VAV case but we can start to instead of spreading set points we can just turn off equipment altogether so the, the group we could rotate around in groups of controllers where zero means nobody's getting shut down and then if you had you know, two or four groups, depending on how you're splitting up your building, then if your group is the active group, uh, then your your shed levels would tend to be lower and your rotate levels would tend to be lower. So then perhaps at um, uh, level three, you if your group was active, you might shut everything down at level three. And then at level six, you might just say, hey, everything shuts down. We're not just spreading set points. We're shutting you know, the equipment down all the way down to the fan. Because spreading the set points should cause the compressors to run less. But if you shut the fan down, then you, you're, that unit should be using next to no electricity. So you have to distribute the signal between the controllers. There's ways to do that. And then once the ASIC-1 controller knows what the demand level and group are, then it can spread set points and shut down equipment according to its programming. And so that's kind of described here in the documentation as well. If you go look at demand reset range, demand rotate level, 
So the demand rotate level is usually lower than the shed level. So that means when your group is active, then um, and you shut down and the demand shed level just is regardless of what group you're in we're going to shed fans at this level and so those are available in both ASIC ones but they do need to be told what level and group they're in they, they won't do any of their own calculations to determine the level and group <clears throat> 